Hey everyone, this is Raja from Charger Games and welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're gonna learn about c -sharp scripting in Unity in just 15 minutes. This is part 3 of my c -sharp for Unity series. So in this video, we're gonna learn about a lot of things like player controller, player movements, playing audio, collecting coins, moving camera and all these things. So I hope you're really excited for this. So let's get started. So first of all, we're going to learn how we can move the cube using our keyboard inputs just like a player controller. So to do that, I'm going to go inside my scripts folder and here I'm going to create a new C sharp script and I'm going to name this one player. Now I'm going to first of all select my cube and drag and drop my player script on my cube and then I'm going to double click to open the player script in Visual Studio. So here in the player script, first of all, we're going to take the input and then we're going to move the player. So we're gonna move the player using the rigid body component. So first of all, here we need a reference to the rigid body. So here let's write rigid body in capitals, rigid body RB. So this is gonna be a reference to the rigid body of our player. Then here we're gonna create two new variables. We're gonna write float x input and then float z input. All right. And then here we're gonna create a new awake function void awake and inside this we're going to say rv equals get component rigid body so this will give us access to the rigid body component that is attached to our uh, player so that we can move the player using this rigid body all right now inside the update function we're going to take our inputs and we're going to store those inputs inside x input and the z input variables so here we're going to say x input equals input dot get access horizontal so this will return us 0 and 1 when we have pressed the left and right arrow keys on our keyboard now we're gonna write z input equals input dot get axis and here we're gonna write vertical so this will return us minus 1 0 or 1 when we are pressing the up and down arrow keys on our keyboard so when we press the left and right arrow keys we will get the inputs inside x input when we press the up and down arrow keys we will get the input inside z input now we need to use these inputs to move our player for that we're going to go inside our fixed update function so here we're going to write void fixed update and here we're going to first of all get access to the velocity of this rigid body and then we're going to set the velocity to this amount and here we're going to create another new variable we're going to write float move speed so we're going to move our player with this amount of speed okay so here first of all i'm going to create a new variable i'm going to call it float x velocity and for this i'm going to write equals x input multiplied by move speed then i'm going to write float z velocity and this will be equals to z input multiplied by move speed okay so we are getting the input and then we are multiplying it with the speed and storing the value inside this velocity variable finally we will add this velocity to our rigid body to do that we're going to say rv dot velocity this is the velocity of our actual player equals and this is a vector 3 so we need to write new vector 3 for the x velocity we're going to write x velocity for the y velocity we're going to keep it unchanged so we're going to write rv dot velocity dot y that means whatever velocity we had in our rigid body in the y axis we're going to keep it same but for the z axis we're going to write z velocity all right so now we have set the x y and z velocity for our rigid body so now our player will be moving when we press the left and right or up and down arrow keys on our keyboard so let's go back to unity and see if it's working all right so here we are back inside unity and you will see here we have the player script but the things are not showing up because we have not made them public so let's go here and make this move speed variable a public variable so that we can actually enter our move speed here so now we have made it a public variable let's go ahead and save it and go back to unity and here in unit you will see now we have this move speed field here we're going to simply give a speed value by which we want to move our player i'm going to write 10 here so 10 okay so now the final thing we need to do is we need to add a rigid body component to our player so here we're going to write add component physics and here we need to write a rigid body so now we have a rigid body component attached to our player so our script will access this rigid body and add a velocity to our player so now let's go ahead and click on play and you will see now i can move my player left and right using the arrow keys but the problem is that 
our player actually rotates but we don't want to do that so to solve this issue we're gonna go to our rigid body go to constraints and we're gonna set the freeze rotation we're gonna go to constraints and set the freeze rotation on x y and z axis so now our rigid body will not rotate so now if I go ahead and click on play you will see now I can move my cube up and down and left and right and it will move so now let us give more speed or more space to this cube so that it can move in a broader direction to do that I'm gonna select our plane and make the X scale to 5 and make the Z scale 5 as well so now our player will have more space to move so if I click on play you will see now it will be able to move throughout the whole plane like this all right but the problem is that when it goes out of view from the camera the camera will not be able to follow it okay so now let's create a way now let's find out a way so that our camera can always look at the cube to do that here I'm gonna create a new script I'm gonna write camera controller okay now I'm gonna select our main camera and drag and drop the camera controller onto our main camera now double click to open it Visual Studio here first of all we need to create a variable we can write public transform target so this is the target that we have to look at all right in order to always follow and look at the target here we can write transform dot look at and this is a simple function and here we need to simply pass the transform component that we want to look at so here we need to write target so now our camera will always look at the target and follow the target okay so now that we have done this let's go back to unity and see if it is working or not so here inside unity I'm gonna select my camera and here we have the camera controller and it is waiting for a target in the target I'm gonna drag and drop our cube which is our player and now if I click on play you will see wherever our player moves our camera actually looks at this as you can see wherever our player moves our camera actually looks at this and if you see at the scene view you can see the camera is automatically rotating to see the cube so this is how our camera is always rotating to look at the cube wherever it is moving but here sometimes you can see the camera can rotate around itself and it can rotate in certain way so that it gives us a wrong direction and whenever we press the left and right arrow keys our cube will not move at the correct left and right position to solve this problem what we can do is we can go to our plane and here we can move our plane at the front just like this so that our player only moves around this plane and nowhere else so now I'm gonna click on play and now you will see our player moves and our camera actually follows the cube around the whole plane and it doesn't rotate around itself and it gives us a good result to get a better result you can also select our camera and move it upwards somewhere like this so it will give us a better result so now you will see I can move my cube and our camera always follows the cube around the whole plane and it doesn't rotate around itself and doesn't give us any wrong results so our code is working and it is giving us a good result so this way you can create a very simple camera follow script with a very simple code now we're gonna create some coins so that our player can collide with the coins and collect the coins so let's get started to do that here I'm gonna go ahead and create a new 3d object a new cylinder and then I'm gonna double click to zoom in it so here we have our cylinder now we can go to our scale tool by clicking on this and then simply make it like this so now as you can see it looks like a coin now we need to rotate it around this x-axis to actually make it look like a coin to do that I'm gonna select the cylinder and go to the rotation and change the X rotation to 90 so now as you can see it looks like actually a coin now let's go ahead and rename this one to coin okay so this is our coin you can go ahead and add some colors to it or make it even more smaller on this axis you can go to materials and add any of the materials here or you can simply go ahead and duplicate and create a new material add it to the coin then go to the material change its color to something golden like color so that it looks like it's gold you can also change the different values like metallic value to make it look like gold so here we have our coin but the problem is that as you can see the Z X Y directions of the coins are flipped so if you want to rotate the coin or do anything with the coin you will face some issue to solve this problem 
you can go ahead and create a new empty game object name this one coin okay and drag and drop our coin inside this coin now that our coin is child of this coin let's go to our child coin and click here and click on reset position so now our coin will be a child of this coin wherever this is our coin will be there so let's select this one and reset its position as well reset position okay so here we have the coin so now our child coin is always at the same position as our parent coin and we can do anything with this coin so here we have our coin now we're gonna add a tag to this coin so let's go to the tag click on add tag and as you can see I have this coin tag added here you can simply click on plus to add a new tag and then go to coin and from here select the coin tag so now we have the coin tag added to the parent coin object all right now we're gonna go ahead and add component physics and we're gonna add a simple sphere collider to it so as you can see we have a sphere collider added to the coin now we're gonna select the child coin and disable its capsule collider you can also delete it because we don't need this we're gonna detect the collisions using the parent coin now okay so now we get to write a script so that we can detect collisions with the coin and we can collect the coins so let's go to our cube and double click to open up the player controller script and here we need to write void on collision enter and here we're gonna write if collision dot game object dot tag equals coin that means we have collided with the coin then we're gonna simply destroy the coins so here we're gonna write destroy collision small collision dot game object so now it will destroy the coin with which we have collided so let's see how it's working so let's click on play you will see here we have our cube here we have our coin we can simply go ahead and select it and as you can see as soon as it collides with the coin the coin gets destroyed that means we are now able to collect the coins now let's go ahead and drag and drop the coin inside the prefabs folder so that we can make it a prefab so now as you can see the coin is a prefab now we can simply duplicate it and position it on different places around the screen so i can duplicate it again and position it at different places so now we have all these coins and we can go ahead and collect all of them but what you can do is let's go ahead and add a rotation to the coin so that they look better to do that here inside my scripts folder i'm going to go ahead and create a new c sharp script and i'm going to name this one coin script so inside the coin script here we're going to create a new variable we're going to call this one public float rotate speed and here inside the update function okay let's do it in the inside the fixed update inside the fixed update function we're going to simply write transform dot rotate okay and first of all we need to write uh, around which axis we want to rotate so we want to rotate around y so we're going to write vector 3 dot up and for this one we're going to write rotate speed so now this will rotate it around this y axis with this rotate speed okay so now that we have done this now we need to actually attach this to our prefab so as you can see here we have the prefab and here we have the coin we can simply go to add component scripts and select the coin script that we have created and from the rotate speed let's give you the rotate speed value of 5 okay so now you will see that here we have all these coins and all of them have the script attached and all of them have this 5 value that's because we have done the changes in the prefab if you if you don't do the changes in the prefab then they will not be applied to these coins so now if i click on play you will see all the coins are rotating and we can go ahead and collect any of them so let's go ahead and collect these coins one by one so collect this one let me go ahead and collect this one this one and now collect the easier ones from here so you have the easier ones collect this one and collect this one as well so now this way we have collected all the coins and all the coins are rotating as well so now we're gonna play some audio whenever our player collects a coin so let's see how we can do that in order to do that we need to have at least one audio source component and at least one audio listener component in our scene now our main camera already has an audio listener so we need to add a audio source component and we're going to attach it to our player 
So let's go to our queue, go to add component, go to audio and select this audio source. So now our cube has an audio source component attached. And here we have an audio clip that I have got from Kenny assets. And I'm going to drag and drop this coin three on this audio clip slot. So now our audio source component has an audio clip that it can play. Now here's a very important thing. As you can see here, we have something called play and awake. We're going to go ahead and uncheck it because if we check it, then the audio will be played when the game starts, but that's not what we want. We want to play it only when we need it. Okay. So now let's go to our cube and open up the player controller. And by opening up the player controller, we're going to go inside this collision. Whenever we are colliding with the game object here, we're going to say, get component audio source so we can we are getting access to the audio source component dot play so now this will simply go ahead and play the audio which we have attached to our audio source once whenever this happens whenever this event happens so here in unity as you can see now i can go ahead and select any of these coins and as you can see whenever i collide with any of these coins the audio gets played and we collect the coins. All right. So our audio code is working and now we can collect the coins and an audio will be played every time we collect a coin. So this was a way by which you can attach only one audio clip and play it. Now let's learn how we can attach multiple audio clips and play any audio clip that we want. So let's see how we can do that. Let's open up our player controller script. And here we're going to create a new variable. Here we're going to write public audio clip coin sound okay now here instead of simply playing it what we're going to do is we're going to say get component audio source dot play one shot so instead of calling the play function we're going to write play one shot and inside that we're going to pass the audio clip that you want to play so here we need to write coin sound all right so now we're gonna play the coin sound once whenever this event happens and here we have the coin audio clip now only thing we need to do is let's go back to unity and here we're gonna go inside the player script and as you can see it is waiting for a coin sound so we're gonna go to our assets and drag and drop the coin sound or whatever audio you have right here and now you will see you can simply go ahead and touch these coins and as you can see the coin sound plays just like before. So this way the same thing happens but in a different way. And this is more flexible because now you can add any audio source that you want or any audio clip that you want and it will be played whenever you want to play it. Okay. So this way we have created all these things, the audio source, the audio listener, the audio script, the player controller, the coin moving script, the camera moving script and all these things. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed watching this. So if you want to learn more and build some more cool things, you can check out all my other videos and all my other courses from the links in the descriptions below. So go ahead and check out the links, build some more cool games, and I'm going to see you in the next videos soon.